Okay. DigiKey and Adafruit present. Hi on MPI. This week's Iron MPI is from TE Lady Ada. TE is back. They've been on Iron MPI a couple times, but they keep coming up with interesting new products, and so yeah. they get the MPI prize. Um, this they keep week, making new products. We'll keep making MPI. That's right. Videos. That's cool. Okay, so this week, uh, I've actually noticed a bunch of companies that do sensors are all sort of releasing sensor revisions around now. Don't know why, maybe just kind of the end of the year they want to get those uh, versions out. Uh, but this week's uh, new product is the HTU31D and 31V. These are temperature and humidity sensors from TE. They're, they've got excellent uh, temperature humidity sensors. In fact, you might be thinking, don't you already have a breakout for that HTU31? No, you're thinking of the HTU21, which is still one of my favorite temperature and humidity sensors. Um, really easy to use, very reliable. Uh, it's got that, uh, you know, great I squared C interface. It's very simple um, but complete. And they've it's a couple of years old now. It's a, you know a couple of years old, and they, I think they wanted to revise it, update it, make it a little bit better. Uh, the H two twenty one I think had maybe you know maybe half a degree of accuracy and three uh, percent uh, or four uh, percent percent humidity. Um, accuracy and the HU31 improves that. It's got 0.2 degrees centigrade uh, Celsius um, accuracy for temperature and for humidity it's about 2%. So a nice big improvement there. Uh, the pinout is not the same. The package is the same but the pinout's a little bit different. As you can see here it still has I squared C as you would expect but it also adds uh, a reset pin and you also get an I squared C address selection pin. So that's good. You can uh, alternate between, I think, 41 and 42 are the two uh, I squared C addresses. And there's a hard reset, which I always like to have. Um, it's nice to be able to hard reset a sensor along with a microcontroller in case it gets into a, an unusual state. Uh, there's also a software reset. Um, speaking of what I really like about these sensors is how they, they can do pretty much everything you want in a temperature and humidity sensor and they don't have like a ton of extra stuff to confuse you. Um, it's pretty straightforward. They have soft reset. You can turn the heater on, turn the heater off, which is great for reducing power, but also to um, get any uh, moisture off of the sensor. Um, so you're reading the actual air humidity, not like the humidity on the sensor, you know, if there's a, a bit of water on there. You can read the relative humidity as well as the temperature and humidity. There's a diagnostic result that gives you about you know a couple bits of information about you know how the device is doing, um, and there's a unique I think it's 32 bit or 24 bit serial number. So you know kind of all the nice things that you want, and there's also a CRC capability. So um, when you send and receive commands, um, there will be a, a cyclic redundancy check to so make sure that the data isn't being corrupted. You're getting valid temperature and humidity data. I think that's important, especially for people who want to use this for um, medical uses or they want to control uh, home automation or environmental stuff. You don't want to like accidentally turn on the sprinkler. It turns out that there was like a you know a, a bit flipped or uh, a loose wire that made you think that it was very dry, but actually wasn't. So uh, a nice compact but efficient and complete uh, command set. Uh, we were able to get it up and running in Arduino. We wrote a library a couple weeks ago, and uh, it was up and running in like a, an hour or two. It was very easy to implement um, in Arduino, and you can definitely port it to your favorite microcontroller quite easily as well. So check out our library if you want some Arduino code to try with this sensor. Um, there's also another version. I, did, I do like the HTU31D, that's for digital, I squared C interface, uh, but they also have a V version for voltage. And I thought this was kind of interesting because it's not that common that you see sensors these days with ratiometric uh, analog voltage output. I mean, I, it's really cool. And I remember, you know, the first accelerometers, like the ADXL335, they came with ratiometric output a long, long time ago. And then everyone sort of went over to SPI or I squared C. So I really like that TE is bringing back um, the ratiometric analog voltage outputs. You know, basically you can power it with three to five volts and then whatever that power voltage is, that's the high end of uh, the analog voltage output. So as long as your analog reference is tied to the same power pin, uh, you'll always get uh, the accuracy and precision that your microcontroller analog digital input will provide. 
Why is this handy? Well, first off, maybe you really want a lot of these and um, you don't want them to sh share on I squared C. Maybe you don't want the I squared C traffic. Maybe you want to have this in a circuit that doesn't have a microcontroller as the feedback loop. You want to have a more, um, like a faster, more reliable, less, less like complicated loop. And you just want that analog voltage with, uh, you know, a, a potentiometer to set the trigger point and maybe some hysteresis with the Schmidt trigger. And then, you know, you could, you could use the analog output in your circuit or feedback loop. What is it really good for? I don't know exactly, but I think it's pretty cool that they have a version with analog voltage out. So I'm gonna check that out. Uh, and here's what it looks like. Uh, they give you a little graph showing it. It's pretty linear. You know, at the very beginning, at the very end, it gets a little bit um, unlinear, so you might do a little bit of math. But for the most part, you know, uh, voltage input, temperature output. Okay, so you can get these. They come in a couple different packages. There's um, a wheel of 150, and it says like 150 in the part number. And then there's a reel of 400. So you're wondering what's the difference between the 150 and 400. It's just how many are in a reel. The component is the exact same. You can pick it up from DigiKey. You can search for HTU31D or it's got this longer part number. Yeah, 223-101-420-48-00-ND or the short URL digikey.com forward slash short URL Z1HJHJ. Which is pretty easy to remember. Um, they don't yet have a version with the, the Teflon covering on it, which they did for the HTU21D. I'm hoping that comes out soon. It was really one of my favorite things about the HTU21D. So, uh, but so far, I'm really liking it. It's extremely fast, um, and it's, it, it's very stable. Uh, so I think they did a good job kind of leapfrogging. Uh, yeah, they haven't updated the sensor in a bit, but when they did, they did an excellent job. So you want to go to the overhead, yeah. and I'll show the demo. Uh, I've got uh, the sensor here. I've got it hooked up to my feather, and I've got a little OLED just showing the temperature and humidity. It's uh, not very humid here, to be honest. Um, temperature is nice and comfy, though, nice room temperature. And then if I uh, breathe on the sensor, which is right here, you'll see how fast and responsive it is. It's already, um, you know, goes up to 60 and then quickly drops down. So I, I definitely like how responsive the humidity sensor is. Uh, it's very quick and um, it's very stable. You know, once it, once it settles, you know, within 1%, you're going to keep that uh, precision. The accuracy is, you know, 2% plus or minus, but uh, the precision is it's nice and stable, which I really like. All right, and they have a one minute video and we're gonna play it. It's actually pretty chill. It's just like musical. It's super chill. Yeah, so nice enjoy. Fun. Yeah. 